In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we're going to continue our look at creating your own particles. Let's assume that we are in the middle of a commercial and we want to create a particle for the vehicle you see on the screen and save it for this project and future ones. We're going to look in this case about the different emit methods that you have when you design a particle. So we're going to move to our particle room. We have the spray of dots on the left, or we can press the F6 key, and that will get us to our default particles. What I'd like to do is make my own, so I'm going to click at the top. In the lower right corner, I see a plus sign, and then I see the folded piece of paper that will help me create a new object. And it will take me to my default location, which will be um, similar for you. It will have your default directory and your PowerDirector version, and then these subfolders. Now, I actually added another item to my default directory. And you can do that if you remember where it is and just copy and drop additional objects there. I'm going to click on the Save and click on Open. Now, the default emit method, if I look on the right, happens to be the one called point. And as we saw in the previous exercise, you can move this anywhere on or off the visible screen. You can control the direction from which the items will come and the width of the spread where you will see those items begin to flow across the screen. But we'd like to show you that there's more than one emit method. There are four, three of which I use. If we play this one, for example, we will see all these parameters disappear and the objects will appear from where you see that large circle and then they will begin to fill the screen according to the way I designed it a moment ago. And this is how you design and shape your particles with the point method. But there are two others that are commonly used. The second one is line. When I click on line, I have a horizontal or vertical line. And I can click on either of the red balls. And I have 360 degrees that I can use for my line. And I also can have them come out from that line at an angle, for, for example. Let's move down so we can see better. And I can take that, I can move it 90 degrees so they come perpendicular from the line. Let's play that. So the line is my starting point. And now if I want to move this, say at uh, roughly 45 degrees, and I'll play again, and now they'll come out at the angle from my line. They come out from the top, middle, and bottom of the line. Now, to control the, the width of the origin, I short, can shorten my line. And you'll see the difference here. Or we can lengthen it virtually to uh, the entire width of the screen or more. And play again. And now they come out from anywhere along that line at the prescribed angle. So we control the starting point, kind of the width of the spread, and the direction of the spread when we use the line. And oftentimes, if I want a line, I might make it horizontal. I might start off the screen, and I might have an effect that looks somewhat like this. Very easy way to do something that would be very complicated using any other feature. The third emit method that's commonly used is a circle. And when you're using a circle, you have two parameters that you can control. Wherever the red dot at the end of the green line is, that's where the first particles will appear. Now, right now, I have them appearing from the right. Now, watch what happens when I play this. They start here, and they go around the circle repeatedly for the length of the particle. If I move it to the other side, now they'll start from the left and just continue to go around. The other thing you can control is the tightness of the circle. If I move my line in, I'm not changing the direction, just the length of that little green bar. 
Now it's going to come out in a very tight circle. And the larger I have it, it will come out in a large circle. In this case, most of it will be off the screen. But you might want to do that in certain cases as well. So that is the third common emit method. Now let me mention just briefly the one I don't use. It's called mask. When you click on mask, you have 10 different masks. You have some letters. I assume these are Chinese characters and some figures. And when you use the mask and click on that, the source of your particles is supposed to be the shape of the mask. And you can resize it any way you want. But when I play it, I really don't see anything I would call distinctive. Now, obviously, you can change the mask any way you want, but I really don't see something that's all that effective in any of these characters. So if I want to add my own mask, I click on the little button above my 10 options, and then I can insert a default mask or I can insert a custom mask of my own. But I basically don't use that. I focus on point, line, or circle. But that gives you an idea about the emit methods that you can use when creating your own particles. In the next lesson, we're going to look at the particle styles. And the interesting thing is we can combine the styles with the emit methods. We can change both. So we have many, many different combinations that we can try. We'll explore how to use styles as well as emit methods in the next tutorial.